As I mentioned in Lesson 18, there's a flaw with DOM Level 0 event handlers, and that's we can only assign one function to handle one event for a particular object. Now that may not seem such a bad idea because you know, we can get around that by creating a single function and then executing all the other functions that we may need to execute. But uh, let's think of it like this. Let's say that we use the onload event handler and we have assigned a function that initializes our application. So it's calling three or four functions. And then we decide to use somebody else's code that uses the same onload event handler. Well, one of these onload event handlers is going to get overwritten and either our application isn't going to work or the code that we have imported from someplace else isn't going to work. So thankfully there's a better way that we can assign event handlers but the downside is that it depends upon which browser we use. We have two different types of event models. We have a standard event model which is supported by Internet Explorer 9, uh, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari and Opera. And then we have an Internet Explorer event model which is supported by uh, Internet Explorer 8 and below. And Internet Explorer 9 does support its proprietary event model but it's kind of a hybrid. It supports both the standard and the proprietary Internet Explorer event model. So in this lesson we are going to look at the standard event model and the IE event model and see how we can use these to add multiple functions to handle certain events. However, our solution is going to be old school. We are actually going to create two HTML pages, one for standards, browsers, and one for Internet Explorer. And this is not a best case scenario. We will actually fix this in uh, a later lesson. So let's go ahead and open up our HTML file. This is the try it section, by the way. Uh, this is from lesson 18. I have not changed anything in it, so I am going to change this to lesson 19. The only thing I have done is rename the file. And we need to come all the way down here to our onload event handler. Now, we're going to leave this as is. We could actually change it if we wanted to, but we are more concerned with the links here. And we are using the onclick event handlers for each of these links, and we want to use the standards event model way of assigning event handler. And we do that by using a method called add event listener. So instead of using onclick here, we can use the add event listener method. Now this accepts three arguments. The first is the name of the event that we want to handle. In this case, the name of the event is click. We want to pass the function that we want to execute. Uh, this is the clear uh, link, so we want to pass in reset, and then we need to pass a true or false value to determine whether if we use bubbling or capture. And if you've read lesson 19, you will know what bubbling and capture is. I won't go into that within uh, this lesson in the video. Uh, we are going to pass false, and that's because Internet Explorer uh, versions 8 and below only support bubbling. So by specifying false here, we are going to use bubbling. So we can do the same thing for each of these links. We will do add click event list or add event listener and we need to call calculate and then we will do the same thing here except we will call get handler function and pass enter HTML. Now there's actually a better way to handle all of this. We could actually create a variable called func to uh, serve as a uh, variable to assign a particular function to. And we can get rid of all of these calls here and then after the switch we will call add event listener func. So here we will change the value of func to reset and here we will change func to calculate and then finally we will set func to get handler function. So instead of writing out add event listener three different times we've just done it one time and we have used a variable called func in order to uh, determine which function that we want to assign to this click event handler for this particular link. Now, okay, let's go ahead and let's do the same thing up here. 
this is not in the try it, but uh, we just might as well do this here. So we are going to do window, add event listener, or we can even just get rid of window, but I'm going to explicitly specify that here. Uh, we want the load event. We are going to pass this function here, and then we just need to use false. And so now our code is completely standards compliant as far as our uh, assignment of event handlers are concerned. So if I were to run this in the browser, let's go to lesson 19 and run this. Now I have been using Internet Explorer 9 beta. It supports both the standard event model and the IE event model. So this should work exactly as it has before. So here we get 1 times 9 equals 9. Now notice how we have a back button that lit up here. If we look at our URL, we are actually uh, not canceling the default action of these links. And that is because we cannot simply return false in our event handlers. So we could actually just, oops, we could actually just get rid of return false because that's not taking care of what we want it to do. And we will actually learn how to prevent the default action fairly soon. So let's test this again. And there we go. Everything's working just like it did before, except we are uh, actually going to the pound here. So let's look at the Internet Explorer model. I'm going to copy this file and paste it in. It's going to make a copy. I'm going to call this lesson 19 underscore example 02. And we'll go up here. We'll change this. And now we have used add event listener here. So with the Internet Explorer event model, we don't have add event listener. Instead, we have something called attach event. And this will attach this function to execute whenever the load event fires, but we have to specify on in front of load for attach event. So we have attach event on load, and then we are specifying this function. Uh, attach event does not accept a third argument, so we are going to get rid of that. And now the only thing that we need to change here is attach event. We need to specify on before click and get rid of false. So this should work in Internet Explorer. So let's go back and let's open this in Internet Explorer again. Now we need to make sure that we are going to be in a legacy mode of IE. So I'm going to change this to IE standards mode. And just so that we can prove that we are there, I'm going to do type of add event listener and we are getting undefined. This is a console, by the way. I pressed F12 to get into the developer tools, and with the console, I can execute any JavaScript code and uh, do something. So I could do one plus one, and we get two here. So uh, type of add event listener is undefined, so we are guaranteed that we are using Internet Explorer's event model. So this should work exactly as it did before and we can see that it's working just fine. And clear it, and everything's great. So this is the two event models, the standard event model, which is in example one, where we use add event listener, and then the Internet Explorer event model, which we use in example two, which we are using attach event. So this is really old school of creating multiple files for different types of browsers. And we are going to actually fix that in lesson 21 whenever we write a cross-browser event utility object.